I will pass the floor to Marcela Perez. She joined the Canadian Olympic Committee in May 2021, and she's the manager of digital partnership and monetization. So welcome, Marcela. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining at all times of the day. Um, I will now share my screen. If I can get a thumbs up, you can see that. Is that yeah? OK, perfect. Just gonna close that. Great. Well, thank you again so much for joining us today. Um, I have the pleasure of talking through uh, what we did on social with our partners over the last uh, two games. Essentially, we have some really great examples. Um, so this uh, presentation is called Partnership Activations Across Social Platforms. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, so the topics we'll, uh, I'll be covering today and thinking and starting to um, uh, look at is the distinct dis, uh, digital pillars of our digital team, um, how we approach digital strategy uh, when it comes to our partnership programs, the two types of content on social specifically for our partners, and also what we're kind of thinking about as we look ahead to, to Paris. So maybe I'll do a thank you, Andres, for that introduction. I'll, I'll add a little bit more. Um, so yes, my name is Marcelo Perez, Manager of Digital Partnerships and Monetization. Uh, I started working at the COC, um, I think a month and a half before Tokyo. Uh, so it's been a, a whirlwind and a, and a roller coaster over the last little bit, but it's been a lot of fun. I grew up in a basketball family. So my parents played basketball in El Salvador professionally. Um, and then when we came to Canada, it was very hard to escape basketball. So I played it competitively in different levels for 10 years. Uh, so I've always been involved in sports and have, uh, have been such a huge Team Canada fan before joining uh, the COC. I love working in the digital space. I've been working in the space for a really long time now and have what I love is seeing it evolve. Um, no two years are ever the same. Uh, and I love being able to apply creativity and innovation to what we do um, and what we plan to do year over year. And I think just a little fun fact, uh, more than digital space, uh, my favorite food is pizza. So love pizza even more than that. Okay, and I thought that what might help is if I um, share how the digital team at Team Canada is set up. So we're set up in within the team as three sub teams. So we have the content team. They are in charge of overseeing all of our editorial content from web articles to social media content, um, video production as well. Uh, we have our products and analytics team who oversees uh, the operations of our website, um, our app. We have a Team Canada app. Um, also uh, troubleshooting. They help us in a great deal with troubleshooting and they I work very closely with them on my side for partner integration. Um, and also the analytics. So behind what we do, we always uh, take a look at um, how things perform, what we can do better. Um, and we, we are a team that really uh, relies heavily on data, on data and performance. And then my team, which is new, I, it was started with my role. So partnerships and monetization. I oversee all of our partner content on our, across our digital platforms from start to finish. So from ideation all the way up to wrap up report, um, I help oversee all of our partners' activations. So within digital, we think of digital in, in four pillars. So we have media, um, content, interactive, and rewards. And I'll break, down, break that down a little bit more. So media are media placements, so ads across our website, uh, the Team Canada app, and email and newsletter. We use the media placements as a way to promote either a partner campaign or um, as promotional drivers to an activation that we're doing. Um, so for example, if we're doing, if we've created something in the app um, that's custom to our partner, we will create uh, branded prom promotional drivers to drive to the content. So that's how we use media. Uh, content, which is what I'll delve into a little more in the next section, uh, we look at content in two ways. Turnkey, so think of more of a sponsorship, 
and co-branded content. So something completely new and custom for our, um, for our partners. Uh, when it comes to the interactive uh, pillar, we think of it in two ways, um, but also as you know, with digital, it's always expanding and, and growing. So right now, what we think of it as AR experiences. So think of filters, um, the video that is shown here is a scan the can activation. So an AR scan, in this case with our Molson Canadian uh, partner, you scan the beer, it opens up to a contest page. Um, in-app, we had in-app games. The one on the left with the Molson Canadian was an AR um, game where you would throw golden medals over the, the beer can for uh, to garner more points. And then I'll hold off explaining a little bit on Toyota because I do have that as part of an example later on. And rewards. Um, we think of rewards as lower funnel um, activation. So uh, contesting is a really big on a, as a program within the our digital pillar. Um, we have a an Olympic Club platform where we host our contests. So we typically do monthly contests with our partners all year long, uh, but also during the games during that short window, we had specific contests running for um, our partners as well. And lastly, um, we have our partner perks. So these are promotional um, promos that the partners may have that live within our app in our partner perk section. These can live, excuse me, at any time. Um, they can go, we can bring them up, we can bring them down. They can live within the app. But then we took it a step further and uh, try to tie promotionals to moments during the Olympics. So whenever Canada won a gold medal, uh, Mondelez was able to uh, um, give away golden Oreos for every gold medal that was won. So you, you, you could claim your perk um, through our social, it would take you to the app, and on the app you could go to their website for, um, for a free box of golden Oreos. Uh, the next one on the right is Skip the Dishes, which is our food delivery partner. Um, they had worked very closely with some of our athletes, and so before the game, the, the campaign was essentially, you know, take some time to order in dinner so that you don't miss the moment of the game you're about to watch or the, the event you're about to watch. So we tied these promotional um, perks to moments in time of the games. And so with that, um, I'll share what we, how we start thinking about setting a, a digital strategy with our partners. So one thing we ask them, we try to ask them up front is, what is your overall uh, partner objective? And then also if there's a digital objective. Um, so whether it's awareness, um, awareness of the partnership, awareness of a specific Olympic fan program that they're running, um, if it's engagement, are they looking to engage their team, team Canada fans as a whole, or is it uh, a, their consumer target? Um, when it comes to conversion, are they looking, we have the contesting, like is it data capture? Um, are they looking to uh, do more of a promotional tactic? And once we align on that is when I can start building what their plan looks like. And it usually is a mix of some of these pillars. So for awareness, we think of media and turnkey content. For engagement, we think of co-branded custom content and interactive. And then for conversion, it's the rewards pillar that we, we start to explore. And for the case of this uh, presentation, we'll just delve into a little bit more of the content side of things, both turnkey and co-branded content. So Turkey content um, is historically high performing Team Canada editorial content a partner can sponsor. So for example, on the left here, it's our telecommunic telecommunications partner, Bell. Um, the Daily Metal Count is a series that we post daily on our social to keep count of our metal count. And um, it's content that would run anyways. We would, we, would always be we would always post it regardless if we have a partner. But Bell had asked us to do both something that was that allowed them to have brand presence all throughout the game every day um, with against a, a content piece that we knew performed very well. And so we were able to integrate them um, in a very seamless way. And they did this for Tokyo and Beijing. They came back and did it again for Beijing. So the benefit to the partner is that it raises awareness of the partnership throughout the games. Um, the partner receives uh, a presented by label and logo integration. So they're 
uh, included, as you can see up there, presented by Bell. Um, also, there's integration in the copy. So it usually says presented by Bell and their handle. Um, it's a low lift, low effort. It does not, um, the partner doesn't require much. They will get a courtesy review of the asset to make sure the, the logo is in the right place and that feels, and it feels fine. Um, and then the benefit to the NOC is that it's a monetization opportunity that doesn't require a lot of effort if you plan to do it anyways. Um, it's easy integration. Um, so again, easy to integrate the partner into an asset that uh, is led by your team. And then we know that it's a, it's valuable to the fan. We know it's content that they're interested in. And so it's a great, perfect um, moment to include a, a partner in that content. Another um, example that we have um, that started out as a, um, a piece, as maybe one or two content pieces was Team Canada by the numbers. Um, I believe before my time, uh, I believe it was, it captured all the uh, data on all the athletes that were heading to the game. So in this case, Pyeongchang. Um, but for, for Tokyo, what we did was we partnered with, at the time, our um, data, our analytics partner, SAS, and we created different videos that covered different data points. And so again, this is content that we would have done anyways in some shape or form, and we were able to expand it into a video series. Um, we were also able to host all these videos on our article page. So we were able to get that additional reach of web audience versus social audience. Okay, co-branded content. So when we think of co-branded content, it's really a custom solution for our partner. It's something that allows them to have a Team Canada story that's completely ownable to them. In this example, Bell, again, is our telecommunications partner. And they, um, they, give, um, they give essentially our Team Canada athletes phones and data plans um, throughout, their, throughout their training and, and through the games to make sure that they stay connected to um, their family and loved ones. And so to highlight this program, we had done this for Tokyo and then again for Beijing, um, is we sent the athletes these camera kits um, and had a director um, video chat them and ask them questions. So as you can see, one of the questions was, if you had, if you had a superpower, what would it be? Um, and this was because COVID restricted us on how to capture content. We thought a video call, everyone was doing video calls. This was a way to feel like you were having a video call and asking athletes just fun, um, fun personal questions. Um, and so this was a, a very easy in the way of, um, it didn't require high production as it was just a camera and, and a, a half hour, an hour to capture this content. But it did extremely well for us that again, we brought it back for, for Beijing. And then when we think about what are the benefits of something that's a little more custom to partners, we think about how it engages fans with richer storytelling. Um, the partner gets a deeper and more valuable integration into the content. So the in this case, the program was mentioned uh, directly in some shape or form um, within the videos. And then <clears throat> benefit to the NOC is that it is a much more high value monetization opportunity. It does, we, uh, we look at, uh, we essentially, when we package it up, we look at media and the hard cost. And so the media allows us to have it be a more high value um, package for, for us. Um, our ability to create something that's innovative and outside of our team's budget. So we may not have a budget for some, you'll see some of the examples for what we can do, but our, with our partner in mind, um, we can maybe create content that um, is outside of our scope and then further build on the relationship between fans and our partners in an authentic way. Um, I think that's the biggest key is that we see that the content that resonates most with our fans is when it comes to um, partner content is one that's not too branded, that it feels authentic and um, it, uh, it, it feels like you're giving fans something that they don't get to see um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So in this case, some fun questions you would ask to a friend. Um, who you're video calling. And so now I have a few examples um, that I'll, I'll run you through of what we did for, I believe most of them for Beijing. So the first one we did was the Puck Pass Challenge. It's the, um, our partner who's a Canadian Tire House and Sporting Goods uh, retail partner. 
they approached the COC with a request to help bring to life their social media uh, challenge. So what they were asking Canadians to do is film themselves passing like a hockey puck to one another so that they were going to make video, one single video of all Canadians passing the puck. Um, and so on, for us, they asked us, is there a way uh, Team Canada could create content that, you know, that become larger, becomes part of the larger conversation? Um, and so we ended up saying we would do a pass the pu or puck pass challenge trick shot edition. Um, and this is where we asked Team Canada hockey alumni, uh, Cheryl Pounder, to create a fun trick shot and challenge other um, recent Tokyo Olympians. So uh, not necessarily the athletes heading to Beijing because they were obviously concentrated on the games, but athletes that had just been there um, and could offer some advice. And so funny enough, um, Cheryl set a, a trick shot with her, with her girls and, and, and I believe her, her daughter's friends. And uh, we had four athletes uh, participate in the challenge. So they said, I will, thank you, Cheryl. Um, I will take an attempt at the trick shot. And it was so fun to see their videos from all the way from Florida to Spain to, I think one was in Canada, um, attempt this fun trick shot. And it was a way to, uh, again, have something be ownable for Team Canada, but also be able to um, uh, help bring awareness to, to something our partner was doing. The next example I have is um, taking off with team with uh, Team Canada. So this is specifically our uh, airline partner, Air Canada. So in Tokyo, we ran a very successful Twitter Q and A program with um, Olympians flying home from Tokyo, and Air Canada again approached us um, to help capture the excitement and the moment of athletes flying to Beijing. Unfortunately, um, as we all know, limited to COVID restrictions um, at, the, at the airport, we couldn't necessarily send a, a crew uh, to capture content. So we leveraged the popular social trend of a day in the life. So we sent um, cameras to our athletes to capture their day from the moment they left their place to the moment they got on board the, the plane. And uh, I'll see if I can play it again. Um, and this was really great because again, it's giving fans a behind the look scene of moments that are really special for the athletes and for our partners that they may not necessarily get to see. Um, and the athletes are so used to, you know, capturing moments on camera. They're all on, most of them are on social media to some extent. So it was a very natural um, um, ask for them uh, to be able to capture some of this content for, for us and for Air Canada. Um, I believe this is the last example, and this one, this one we're really proud of. It's um, we launched this uh, a guide to um, video series back in Pyeongchang in 2018, and we brought it back for Tokyo 2020. Essentially, these are um, explainer videos, so a guide to a specific sport. So it's for fans that may love a sport but not know all the all the rules, or are new to a sport and would like to know how what are what other sports. Um, what are essentially the rules of the sports. Um, and so for the ask this time around, because we had done it two, two, two games, they asked us, is there a way to elevate the program in a way and that's engaging and new and interactive for our fans? And so we developed a game called Bob, um, Super Slalom. Um, so not only did we do the videos for bobsleigh, speed skating, curling and snowboard, we also developed this game that lived in the Team Canada app that leveraged that um, same creative design and direction from our videos. And so it was familiar, it was fun, it was engaging, fans recognized it. And it had, I believe, the most unique uh, game users of all the games that we ran. So it was very popular with our fans and they really liked it. It was, uh, oh, again, a way to leverage something we had done before and just elevate it um, in, a new, in a new way. So I included a couple of key takeaways. Um, so when we think of turnkey content, again, we, we are looking at it as what has performed well for us um, that we know is a value to our fans, but we're also, as we're planning for Paris or as we're planning for the next year, what is content that could be easily turned into turnkey content for partners to sponsor? So we're keeping that in mind as we plan ahead, um, both for 2023 and for, for Paris. 
And then from a co-branded um, kind of some key takeaways is think about moments that a partner can own. Air Canada is a good example um, where they have these athletes in a very specific moment in time. And that's, a, that's content that they can own and, and really um, lean into. Another example for Bell is, is yeah, it's connecting um, athletes to one another. And so there, there is a space for all of them to have content that resonates with our fans, that speaks to the space that they own um, and still have it be very engaging. As, as you can see the second point, um, it does not require a huge budget. Um, it's not a, we, we do high production value uh, videos, but in, in some of these cases, we were so limited to how, what we could film that we did ask athletes for, for content and we were able to edit it into content ourselves. They just sent us the video content and then we were, we were able to make it. And then considering new ways to build on equity of past content programs. If you know a partner program has done well, um, we always look to see first, is there a way to elevate it? Is there a life that could still be brought into um, this video series? And then, um, and then explore how, how we can do that for, for the next time. And then last but not least, consider ways to help amplify your partner's Olympic campaign in your own NOC voice. Um, this one's really unique because um, it's, the, it's campaigns that they have their Olympic campaign, but how can you bring awareness to something that they're doing, but still make it uh, relevant to your audience? <clears throat> and so looking ahead to Paris. So I think this is wanted to share kind of where our heads are at when we start thinking about Paris. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to do is optimize our current digital offerings. So that means um, we were lucky enough to sell out all of our media for, um, for Beijing. We'd like to do that again. Um, we'd like to um, sell more partner perks in our app, offer our fans more opportunities to redeem um, promotions from our, um, from our partners and look to see what we can do, what we're already doing and how we can do it even better. And then one thing we're thinking about is how do we bring Canadian Olympic House to life um, via digital for fans back home? <clears throat> so one thing I've, um, I'm doing is working very closely with our events team on how, what are ways that we can get fans back home excited with moments that are happening at um, the Canadian Olympic House and really ownable for our partners again. That's that's very important in, in, in how we think about those, um, those activations, so digital activations. And last is exploring innovative technologies and new platforms. So as I had mentioned, digital is ever changing. And so we're always exploring and thinking about, could we do this? Does this make sense for Team Canada? One of the things we're thinking about is podcasting. Could we create um, a podcast or a podcast series or multiple podcasts as a content pillar? where we're developing a new audience. And then on my end, how do we monetize that audience? How do we, how do we package it up for our partners so that it's easily um, an extension to what we already do? And new platforms on our end are, is TikTok. We are thinking about a, what is a TikTok strategy from an editorial organic standpoint? And then how, how would we um, look to integrate our partners and create programs um, on TikTok for our partners that is relevant both to our audience and to our partners' um, goals. I think that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, Marcela. It was a great presentation. I noted some things down because they were very interesting. Uh, also from, from our end. Uh, first of all, I want to open the floor. Uh, to all of you, if you have any questions, I mean, please feel free to raise your hand or to write them in the chat. So while while I wait for for some questions to come in and and for some hands, I, I will well start with some some questions on my own. Uh, sure. It was interesting to hear that most of your partners, they approach you to find a, a place or, or a content type to, to, yeah, to be placed in. Uh, is that, no, I mean, normally it works like this or normally you also offer some of the, 
I don't know, some of the videos that you have that they could be interesting for them? I mean, is it only one way that they ask or is it you that you ask uh, everybody, for example? That's a great question. Yeah, I, I guess I, I never realized, yes, most of them had an idea in mind um, and that we collaborated with them and, in, in, you know, uh, fleshing out that idea. But for the most part, um, it is we are coming with them with thought starters. So as long as we understand what their objective is, we can say we can take that back, build a proposal that aligns with their strategy, and then bring them ideas first. Um, and that'll go through some revisions. Um, I was looking at past presentations, and sometimes it goes through three before we we land on something that we can sign off. So it is a mix. Uh, some partners have um, for Molson scan the can. They had a very clear idea what they were what they were looking for. But for other partners, it's something that takes uh, a little bit more time to to land on. Because specifically, I was also thinking about the turnkey one that you have with the metal telly, because I think that one is open almost to everybody. But um, I was just wondering yeah. if some other partner came and said, why, why can we not be this time on, on the telly? Or <laughs> Yes. So that's a good point. We, we, we like to give the partners who activated on something before first right, right of refusal. Um, so they'll have a period of time where they can confirm whether they'll do it again or um, or pass on it. We I believe we've had partners pass on on some content before, but um, we we try to give them the courtesy of of first first pick mm. if they'd like to continue with the program. Okay, I, I think that's the first solution. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, Marcella is here for you. So please feel free to to ask. Any question you might have? I mean, okay, I have here one coming in uh, from Colin. Uh, hi, Marcella. Thanks for your presentation about innovative technologies. Have you also thought about using NFTs for further fan or partnership activation, like digital cards? Does someone has experience with it? Yes. So funny enough, leading into Beijing, we I believe we were approached with an opportunity um, to start thinking about NFTs. We, we did do a pretty deep dive as much as we could before the games um, on, on exploring whether we wanted to try that for Beijing. We, we just weren't, we didn't have enough time and we also felt like we needed a little bit more of, um, of an understanding of what it would take to set up NFTs in the platform and if it aligns with um, Team Canada and what, what we're trying to do as well. So, it's not to say that we wouldn't explore it in the future. We definitely have it in the back of our minds, but we we did try. We we looked into it before Beijing. We just, as we all know, we didn't have a lot of time between the two games to uh, to activate on too much that was new. But yeah, that was a great question. Yeah, it was a great question. I guess also it's very hard uh, from a legal standpoint to get a clear <laughs> clear perspective yeah. for like how, how much you can use and how much you own and and not. No, I guess. Yeah, it was a lot to look into and not enough time. Um, that was, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I have another question for Marsha. Um, thank you for the presentation. So two questions we have. First one, do you have any challenges getting athlete buy-in cooperation in terms of filming content themselves? And secondly, how does COC navigate potential conflicts between the organization sponsors and the individual athlete sponsors in the digital space? So great question. So just... Yeah, really great question. Um, so we have an athlete marketing team that we work very closely with. And when we, for example, come up with a, a content idea, the content team and myself will do a short list. So we'll say these five, 10 athletes, depending on how many, would be perfect for this content. Then our athlete marketing team um, filters the list and, and then approaches the athlete. And so we pay our athletes for any of this branded content. Um, it's not, it's not uh, we always include an athlete fee in the hard cost in the production to our partner, because um, we obviously very strongly feel that anything that the athletes do, they should be compensated for. And so um, in terms of filming themselves, we, we let them know what the, the, the ask is. And so they know ahead of time, you will need to film yourself. Um, you will need to send us the, the, all the instructions are there up front uh, before they sign their contract. So we're very transparent in what we're asking them to do. And then we, we pay them accordingly. So we, I don't believe we've had too much pushback. It's always 
um, I'm pretty sure we've always gotten um, someone from the short list of, of athletes we wanted. Um, so there hasn't been too much of a, a challenge there. And then how does the COC navigate potential conflicts between organizations and sponsors? Yeah, um, that is something our athlete marketing keeps in mind as they're going through our list. So we may not be aware of certain individual athlete sponsorships that just aren't in our, in our mind at the time when making the list, but they ensure that there isn't any conflict. Um, and then they usually work with um, agents that uh, will tell us up front, I'm sure there's a conflict of interest here. We can't, unfortunately, we can't work together. I believe that's happened before where an agent, an athlete's agent has said, it, it, this, it does not align, unfortunately, and they pass on the opportunity. Yeah, thank you, and yeah, great question. So if you have more, uh, please feel free to, to also take the floor if you want by, by raising your hand. Uh, I I wanted to propose you a challenge because <laughs> Marcela, because you come from a large NOC with uh, with a lot of partners and resources. But if you had to, if you were in a smaller NOC that uh, just has one partner, or you wanting to, I don't know, acquire one partner, like what would you proposing to? What would you suggest to propose to them that they can own as as a content piece in digital? Mm. So one thing that we did um, that I didn't include as turnkey because I don't think we will do it again. <laughs> it was very difficult, but we had, a, we had a content piece that was called the daily preview. So it highlighted the athletes that were going to, um, the athletes or the competitions happening on day two, for example. Right. So it was like a, it was like almost like a schedule, but with icons with the, with the icons. And so we had a partner sponsor it, but it became challenging for us because um, we wanted to include athlete pictures in the back. And so live during the games, we had to get approvals for the athlete pictures at Beijing with their agents every time we wanted to use a, an athlete image. So the way I would recommend an, uh, an NSO to, oh, NOC to do that is to take out the athlete image and just similar to if I can go back up to this one, have an image and maybe, for example, if you know it's going to be volleyball, soccer, and track, um, you can say, watch on day six, watch for these competitions happening and keep it illustrated. Don't include an athlete picture because it got very complicated for us. Um, but that's something that's a content piece that's a value to fans. They wanna know when team, Canada is playing on which day. Um, and that's something that is templated. So it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to look different every day. This was, this had the same look every day. Um, so it's, it's very easy to update it day by day and be able to include a presented by a partner. So it's like the schedule of the day. Yeah. So yeah, great. Uh, as you said, uh, it's very easy to update and, and fans almost will expect this to come at, at one point if you have been posting the same update every every day. So yeah, so yeah that's a, a great piece of content. What I particularly loved as well was the pass the puck challenge. Mm -hmm. I, I think this can be done with uh, also volleyball or, or football or etc. So I think that's also like a very easy, easy, I don't know, video to do with user-generated content and, and, and engaging the, the community. Absolutely. We used alumni, we used athletes from another games period, the summer for, so yes, it's, it's uh, yeah. um, challenges are always fun. It was the first time we, I think, participated in a challenge like this. So it was fun to, to try for a first time. Yeah, I also can imagine to, to engage the community and the followership to, to, to record their videos and putting it together, that would be. Yeah, <laughs> also, also very nice. So I have a, another question from the NOC of Andorra. So Marcela, thank you for your interesting content. What advice would you give to a small media team where they are currently only managing Instagram or Twitter? Yeah, yeah, we I would recommend, again, something templated. And so for example, this asset we use across Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. One asset across the channels 
that's informative um, would be easy. So you're not doing something custom for each platform. You wanna keep it templated. These turnkey ones are so important because um, as you can imagine during the games, you don't have a lot of time to update them. So these ones are easy enough that you update by pictures or you update by numbers. Um, and it allows for you to create one content piece that could be um, shared across different platforms. Um, and they're more on the informative side, which I think is, is a value to fans. Um, it doesn't have to be these great athlete videos by any means. If you, if you have the capacity to do them, it, it'd be great. But I would say start with something like this that partners, um, that you can show that it's a value to partners. Um, and, and happy to share any like points and, and any, any tips on how we've positioned this a little more formally to partners. Um, feel free to reach out to me with any questions because happy to share, but I would say that keep it, keep it simple. Yeah. So also thanks for, for offering your help. I, I, I don't know if you had your contact details somewhere else, but for sure we can also share them um, with, with all the yeah, attendees. Yeah, I had it. Yeah, I I'll think I saw up. them so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So feel free to connect with Marcela on, on LinkedIn. So I mean, last chance to to ask any questions. Um, we still have a bit of time, but we can also wrap up uh, if 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 you don't have any questions anymore. So I, do, I, I think I do see one here. Um, perhaps. how do you bridge the gap between athlete interest and partner interest? Uh, maybe yeah, they send it just to you the chat right ah no sorry oh. yes i saw it i saw it sorry i missed that one yeah so yeah how do you um, bridge the gap between athletes interest and the partner interest that's a great one i i'll say that um it leans heavily on our content team to understand what our fans find interesting which usually is what athletes find interesting um I, we try to have things rooted in some kind of insight um to be able to bring to partners and then getting partners interested in it is um, they want to know that it performs well. So if you're able to um, set a KPI, so this is going to get this many impressions or this is going to get this many video views, something tangible I find really helps beyond just a great content piece. I think being able on digital to deliver results to partners um, is just equally important. That will pique their interest if they know that a piece is going to get X amount of video views and you're committed to um, to reaching that. So um, I think it's a little, it's a little different for both. Um, both have different objectives, but for the athlete side, I, I think I lean very heavily on the content team to be able to tell me what is, uh, what is of interest to, um, what would be of interest for athletes to participate in. So we got uh, another question from Yuriko from Japan. So just to confirm, your partners pay additionally the packages and it's not included in the original sponsorship. That's a great question, Yuriko. Mm -hmm. um, it is, so the way that our contracts are set up, some partners have dedicated digital banks um, so that we can use for digital activations. Um, and so we, we start, taking, start taking the investment amounts from there. So for example, if, I'm just going to grab any of these ones. If the Air Canada one costs 50000 and uh, Air Canada has a digital bank of 50000 we would decrease from that amount. They have 50000 left for another, for Paris, for example. So typically, that's how partners have, have used their, their digital banks. Um, but some partners do have paid incrementally for programs. Um, they... I always try and, like, go a little more than what they have and suggest... Um, you know, you can use your bank here and incrementally, you could get this extension if you pay an extra 10,000, whatever that looks like. So um, I always try and push for incremental dollars if we're able to do that, but um, we use our, our banks first and then see if we can put some something together incrementally. Yeah, that's a smart way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks. So any any uh, any additional questions to Marcela? I, I think we I think we can wrap up at this stage and and, and apologies Boniface for 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 missing your your question. Uh, so first of all, thank you very much, Marcela, and uh, for the also the Canadian uh, NOC for yeah for having you and for sharing your experience with, with all of us. 
Uh, yeah, Churico is uploading, I see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so we will share the presentations since some people are asking in the chat, I see. I just also wanted to briefly say that for next month uh, in December, we will having a short workshop about how to write engaging copy uh, in the posts. So it will be a one and a half hour um, workshop. We will share with you the invitation link very shortly along Marcela's presentation. Also, we will share with you a small feedback form and more to give us idea on future topics that you would like to discuss. Uh, and also, if you want to be an NOC presenter one time, I mean, or, or you're looking for, for solutions or ideas or brainstorming, I mean, feel free to, to fill it out. Or if you've seen something cool from other NOC accounts, we can also approach uh, these NOCs. So the, the idea here is that we share the knowledge we have and, 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 and we connect you together. So once again, to all of you, um, many thanks for taking part. Hope to see you next time. And again, Martella, many, many thanks. And yeah. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. So thanks, thank you. See you soon, all. Bye. Bye.